In a world ruled by credentials, laboratories, and billion-dollar research and development budgets, a barefoot teenager from the dusty trenches of Malawi just detonated the very fabric of everything we thought we knew about energy, innovation, and African genius. His name? Ernest Andrew. Maybe by the year 2025, we should just call him something else entirely. Energy. Because what he did wasn't just an invention. It was a shockwave, a ballistic missile zone, an uppercut against the established norms and status quo. The miseducation systems, the nation of workers, John D. Rockefeller, a middle finger to MIT and Harvard, and most importantly, knockout to physics laws and the brother thermometer first and second laws. This 18 years old genius inventions is a revolutionary movement against solar panels, wind turbine, battery industry, fossil fuel, and even more interestingly, those who called Maxwell Chikumbutso self power technology a hoax and call Maxwell Chikumbutso a scammer, the region of destructive and abusive skepticism, the high priest and police trolls. They better get ready to get roasted this time and fund another excuse to bury Ernest Andrew because they have more coming that when we are done, everything about energy monopolies will be begging to be burned and buried alive. All the planned obsolescence will be cooking to death. Let's dive in deeper into the Ernest Andrew invention that ruptured the internet, torched the textbooks, and silenced even the most arrogant skeptics from Harvard to Silicon Valley. I was one of the skeptics, one villager said. But when I saw his parents' house glowing with light, I begged him to connect mine too. Phones are charging, clippers are buzzing, children are doing homework at night. Not a single solar panel, no fuel, no diesel generator, just air. And still, Western-trained engineers asked, but how? Their problem? They couldn't accept that someone outside their system could possibly know something they didn't. Ernest's invention doesn't just defy physics textbooks. It resurrects a conversation the elite thought they'd buried long ago, Tartarian technology. Once dismissed as conspiracy, Tartarian theories speak of an ancient civilization that built massive structures and ran on free atmospheric energy. They didn't burn fuel. They didn't plug into fossil grids. They pulled power from the sky. Sounds insane? Well, so does a teenager building a free energy device from bicycle parts in the middle of nowhere. And yet, here we are. Maxwell Chikumbutso was the warning shot. Ernest is the bullet. If you followed the free energy world, you've heard of Maxwell Chikumbutso, the Zimbabwean inventor whose self-powered generator cooked the minds of Western engineers. But while Maxwell shook the system, Ernest shattered it. Ernest didn't just invent something. He recreated what only ancient texts and forbidden patents hinted at, with no lab, no investor, no institution. If Maxwell was the lightning, Ernest is the thunder that follows. This invention isn't just about electricity, it's about control. Think about it. What happens to oil companies when you don't need fuel? What happens to utility giants when you can power your home for free? What happens to governments that use energy as a weapon when villages can break away from the grid? This is why Ernest's invention has the Western world shook. Because it doesn't just challenge the science, it challenges the economics of power. And the world isn't ready for that. Engineers can't explain it, and that's a problem for them. Some Malawian engineers invited to examine the system voiced their confusion. What type of air is he using? What reaction is occurring? How is the energy extracted? But Ernest wouldn't, or couldn't, explain. And honestly, maybe he shouldn't. Because historically, that's when the theft begins. The moment African inventions are explained, they vanish into Western patents and reappear decades later under European names. Ernest silence is not ignorance, it's protection. Eventually, Malawi's government realized they had a diamond sitting in their backyard. Energy Minister Ibrahim Matola stepped in, offering equipment, training, and safety materials. More importantly, the government formed a team of experts to validate and assist Ernest's work. 
Such innovations, the minister said, can help us achieve energy access that is not only widespread, but also affordable and sustainable. They even gave Ernest the mandate to power the local primary school, the very system that failed him when he couldn't afford school fees. Now he is electrifying it. And guess what? 12 volts of free energy is enough to punch a hole through the entire energy matrix. Because once one village becomes energy independent, others will follow. And when millions follow, the entire system crashes. What's really being threatened? Not science, profit. The fossil fuel cartels, utility corporations, and global institutions thrive on your dependence. They don't fear machines, they fear belief. This brings us to our today video sponsorship, Olight. Introducing the Oclip Pro, your ultimate three-in-one lighting companion. So, whether you're working in tight spaces or heading out on a night hike, Oclip Pro adapts instantly. You can use the 500 lumen floodlight for daily tasks, switch to the 120 meter spotlight for focused work, or activate the 40 lumen red light to preserve your night vision. All controlled effortlessly with a side selector. With up to 144 hours of runtime, Oclip Pro is built for endurance. You can recharge quickly with USB-C via a waterproof charging port hidden under a rugged metal cover. It's reliable, efficient, and adventure ready. Or clip it, magnetize it, or loop it with a lanyard. This lightweight design offers multiple carry options to fit your lifestyle. And with its sleek 3 eye lens and tech-inspired finish, it's more than a light. It's a statement piece. Oclip Pro. Where performance meets portability. If there is one product that could save you time, money, and sanity every single day, it's Oclip Pro. This isn't hype, it's a breakthrough. Whether you're grinding at work or chilling at home, this tool upgrades your life instantly at a fraction of the cost. It's not just a product, it's freedom, convenience, and peace of mind in your pocket. Ready to level up? Then don't wait. Grab yours now, before everyone else does. Vice. Puchis link will be available in the video description and pinned comment. They included a coupon code for first 50 to Pew chase this product that was launched yesterday. So hurry up and grab one or more for yourself and household uses. With that said, let's get back to our today's show, shall we? Because if you believe it's possible, you'll try it. And if you try it, you'll build it. And if you build it, they're finished. That's why every time free energy surfaces, they send in the trolls. It's a scam. Violates the laws of physics. Show us peer-reviewed journals. But ask yourself, who wrote those laws? And who profits from them staying unbroken? Isn't that concerning? Let's be clear. This invention wasn't born in a lab. It was born from poverty, from a lack of electricity, from dusty nights without light, from being forced to drop out because no one could pay for his education. But from that darkness, Ernest created light, literally. This is the kind of story that turns education on its head. Because while universities churn out conformists, Ernest followed the voice of inborn genius, an ancestral frequency no textbook can teach. Africa, you were never just a student of history. You were the author. Ernest Andrew is more than a headline. He is a signal, a loud, undeniable broadcast from Africa to the world. You locked us out, you laughed at us, you called us backwards, but now we are rebuilding the future with your scraps. And this is just the beginning. There are hundreds, maybe thousands of earnests in Africa. Geniuses hidden in villages, drawing power from stars, from the earth, from water, from vibrations. What the world calls junk, Africa is turning into miracles. The inventor Ernest Andrews Innovation largely aims to save money villagers spend in buying torches and batteries to light their homes. After realizing that we were facing a lot of problems without using electricity, I thought of trying to make electricity. Now here we are. The 18-year-old secondary school dropout says his generator produces 1,000 volts of electricity. He has now connected nine houses from a self-made transformer. I guess you're on the ampere. This system generates electricity using air. To make a light bulb illuminate, I use power stored in bottles. I experiment with magnetic power to determine how much electricity I can produce. After that, I generate power based on the number of houses I want to supply. But experts complain of Andrew's failure to articulate how he is using air to generate electricity. Or they say he might be purposely concealing it 
to prevent others from copying. What type of air is he using? We using? We don't know. What air is doing to produce the power? We don't know. And he is not saying. How is he taking the air into his system to produce uh, electricity? We don't know. Katumba said if he proved real, Andrew's innovation would be rated among the most extraordinary in the world. The innovation has convinced skeptical neighbors. I was among those who were doubting his ability to generate electricity, which we can use in our homes. But when I saw that he had managed to connect his parents' house, that's when I asked him to connect my house too. Now life is simple. The villagers use the free electricity to charge phones and plug in electric shaving machines. Andrew's mother, Evelyn Chinguo, says he dropped out of school in 2018 because of lack of school fees. In the meantime, Andrew is working to connect the entire village and fulfill the government's request to illuminate the nearby public primary school. So what now? The world has only three options. One, ignore him, as they've ignored Africa's brilliance for centuries. Two, try to destroy him, as they've done with any threat to their empire. Three, or embrace him, fund him, protect him, and learn from him. But whatever the world chooses, one truth remains unshakable. The future is no longer in the West. It's being born again in Africa. Final thoughts. The world is waking up to a simple, uncomfortable fact. The most disruptive technology of 2025 wasn't made in California. It wasn't developed in Germany. It wasn't released in Tokyo. It came from a teenage dropout in a forgotten African village who turned thin air into light. And no matter how much they try to deny, doubt, or delay it, they cannot stop it. Because the air we all breathe now powers Ernest Andrews' village. And soon, it may power the world. Stay tuned, because there is more coming, and breakdowns of how this impossible invention is rewriting the laws of science, energy, and power. But just remember, when the lights go out on the old world, Africa will still be glowing. Do subscribe to my channel, turn on your notifications, and stay up to date. Now if you will excuse me ladies and gentlemen, I have a flight to catch and free energy to enjoy. Don't forget the journey of another self-powered car has just begun.